Hey guys, it's Vendillion1998, and you may be wondering, why is the Season 4 logo up above me? Well, this is what I like to call one of the lost episodes of Talking Time with Caffeine. See, back in 2016, my channel was down for a while because of a copyright issue on YouTube where I was on probation for like six months and couldn't upload any videos longer than 15 minutes. So I tried hosting my podcast over on my private channel, but yeah, it worked out very well. I meant it worked out, I guess, for the first time, but overall it didn't work out very well at all. And, well, here are the results. I only recorded two episodes total before I gave up and was waited until I got my role channel fully functional again. Anyways, this, this episode stars me, my friend Stick1990, and Kyle, who the season three uh, co-stars Gabe and Clayton, known as X Spike Spider, had interviewed earlier in the year. So, he hope you enjoy what we originally called "Back to Action," which was supposed to be the season four premiere. See ya. A scooter. I like driving cars. Hey, welcome guys. This is the premiere episode of season four. We're I'm here with Snick and Kyle. How have you guys been since our last episode when we interviewed Kyle? Um, I don't think I was in that episode. The last episode I was in was like talking about Star Wars The Force Awakens. No, and I was being attacked by my dog in that. No, you're in the you're in the interview episode. I was? Yeah. yeah. That was after the um, Star Wars one? Yeah. I didn't know. Wow. So how you been? how you been, Kyle? I've been doing good. Just uh, been watching the Science Channel more since before. I didn't really trust it, but now I do. So. <laughs> well, I'm not being attacked by the dog today. I may have to take him out soon, but... So, I know Snick's making videos, but what about you? You've been making videos like you mentioned on your Facebook page? The Facebook page? Um, well, I've been making some of them, but not much. I mean, I don't know about that long one where I'm, I don't know if... Right now I'm kind of busy with school, but I'm hoping I can start on why I'm no longer creationist soon. What this this the summer when you're some break? Yeah, I still need to up. I still need to download the program to use it too. So I want to be well, like professional. What level of school are you in? Ninth grade. I'm going up. Oh, to oh nine. Oh, I see. Yeah, I'm at college now. They let me out for the summer already. <laughs> nice. So. So, what? Have you found any uh, videos that you want to uh, refute yet? Um, hold hold on. Could you? Yeah, you have to go on YouTube. I don't know. I don't think I can do it. But, um, there is this guy named. I'm trying to remember his name. It's Keith Thompson. He's like an apologist, but mm -hmm. he tries to argue against. He's um, he's gonna upload a documentary, probably in like in a month, called mm -hmm. Darwinism's Downfall. I don't know how long it's going to be. I know most of the documentaries are like at least an hour long, so <laughs> I don't know if you want to go over that. He uploaded his trailer about a month ago, so. I don't think I can do anything but look at that right now because I'm still, still getting the bugs out of this. But at least the audio is working, so that's a good thing. Now, wait, you lost your ability to do broadcasts because of a copyright strike, right? Yeah, on my main, on my main channel. Oh, this but nice, on this one you're fine, yeah. This, this is my side channel because I don't have any videos on really. 
except the one I uploaded uh, with the interview last time. Okay. Which is why I'm trying to get the other my uh, broadcast software to work, so I can broadcast to other places like Twitch or whatever. I can upload those on Twitch or oh, on. Oh, 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 oh shit! I thought I was gonna die there. I'm sorry. Or UStream or OBS. I can't, I can't upload on YouTube right now. Oh, Mario Tube introduced you to OBS? Or did you know about it beforehand? I knew about it beforehand. Oh, okay. I'm going to kick a zombie off the edge. This is Haran. So did, so did you both see uh, Civil War? Yes, I did. I okay. did. <laughs> you saw it too? Nope. Oh. It was, oh, you were saying yes, I guess can't tell you, talk about it then. Unless you won't, won't mind spoilers. I don't care. Uh, oh, you're not you... going to see it? Nope. I don't really care. Okay. You don't like Marvel movie, like superhero movies or Marvel movies? or? Nope, not really. I don't really watch many movies. It's, it's my escape from things sometimes. Oh, it's... wait, I need camo. I need camo. Well, I watch movies all the time because that's my big interest. That's how I enjoy myself alongside games. But unlike games, no, unlike games, movies I can't really resell once I'm done with them. You can't? I mean, you can, but I don't think they really gain much value. Because okay. movies get re-released all the time, games do not. Only with like special cases. So, hey Kyle, is, is there been any like a uh, re, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like backlash from your con your conversion, not conversion, but what do you mean? Like when you became when you stop being a creationist, the, pe the pe people that you used to hang out with like start attacking you. Well, yeah, I mean, um, people or I, people around me, like, they didn't really know, but people, like, I started, like, when I told people that I wasn't creationist anymore, then, especially my uncle, he got really, like, hostile towards me, like, I think this was, like, a week after our interview, and he just, I don't know, he, he got, like, really upset, and was just like, dude, Jeez. like, what's the issue, like, well, because, uh, you believe that you're a monkey? It's just like I'm not. I don't believe I'm a monkey, dude. <laughs> Jeez. So yeah, I mean, other than that, I didn't really get many, get much, not not, not much happening so that I could actually watch the Science Channel now. And actually, because before I didn't watch it because I didn't trust it. Mm. Evolution was a lie at that time. According to, in my brain, so you know, whatever. True. But see, yeah, I remember I used to watch the Hi History Channel when I was still going to church, and I looked at like, I, like how could they have history before two thousand years ago? That's weird. Yeah. Like, like, like if the Earth was crazy two thousand years ago, then how is, how did the Indians get over here ten thousand years ago? Yeah. Like, Something, wait a minute, something's not adding up here. Well, I know, I've, I've seen Ancient Aliens too, but I'm not, um, I know on that, I'm not, I recently watched a documentary called Ancient Aliens Debunk, so I don't, I used to watch it, but now I don't think so that documentary, so, whatever. There's some, I think there's some people out there that believe that aliens were the, Gods from the, the old times. Yeah, I don't, I don't take that view. That's not really. I guess we're like, I just, like, I just like, don't. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it sounds cool, but I mean, at the same time, it's like it doesn't. If you actually examine their claims, it's not very, um, I guess, scholar. It's not really historical. Scientific or scientific or historical? Yeah. They it's like. Just, it's based on a bunch of fallacies and stuff. So I just stop. I don't really trust that. Those people. I mean, you can look it up. Ancient aliens debunked. 
definitely by Chris White. He he's like a, I think he's like a fundamental fundamental expert. Yeah, I know it's not true, but it'd be interesting if if aliens might exist and and if like the, all the like the they probably um, do. It's just that they're probably light years away. Yeah, that's if, the problem is that if they do exist, then they're probably so far away that we'll never reach them. I mean, yeah, not without is, huge yeah. advancements in technology and scientific advances. Like, there's a lot of things about science that are not understood. Yeah. And there's some things that may never be understood. So, especially if some people are trying to still trying to hold us hold us back in the scientific fields. Like we still have people in the pocket that believe the Earth is flat still, and don't and vaccines kill you. And I mean, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That stuff is kind of stupid. But there's some things that could very well still be up to the debate. Like religion is still like a very controversial thing, and that's something that's not really going to be understood. Yeah, so. But yeah. stuff that's quite obvious, like the world not be, like being round, like stuff that's quite obviously understood, and yeah. people still believe in it the other way, yeah. That's what's being, making everybody be get held back. Yep. I mean, it's cool to debate things, you know, but something... Now, when, really... you by, when you mean by religion, you're talking about like the creationists, or like the people that believe the Earth is 6,000 years old, like people like that. So, because I know... The majority of even Christians accept the you know, evolution and all that the Earth is billions years old, but there are still some that try to hold it back. I mean, that's the thing. Some people believe re religion is the only thing. Like you hear these stories, like where, like someone's kid gets sick with like some kind of disease that's easily treatable in the hospital, but then the parents refuse to go get them treated because of their beliefs. And it's well, like, yeah, oh my god, this kid's well, dying, yeah. we gotta get him to the hospital now. No, just believe. 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 I think that's Scientology. Yeah. I got, no, I can't remember. It's, it's, no, it's Scientology, yeah, that one. That, that's one of them, but some Christians do that too. They just pray. Like, yeah, but the yeah I, like some kind of religion. That. Like that, like that's the kind of that's or, when you're taking it a little too far. Or, like, or, or faith healers. Or it's terrorism. like God's not telling you. God's not going to heal your kid. God's telling you to go get your kid some help. Exactly. I've actually done a study on that, and I found out that prayer is not meant to heal. See? <laughs> wow. If you, I think if you, there's an apologist named J.P. Holding, he up, he uploads videos like cartoon stuff. He said that um, like prayer is not like meant to heal. It's more like I don't know. It's confusing because you know you gotta remember that. I mean, yeah, back then he, God probably did miracles, but it doesn't mean that he has to always do miracles. Yeah, that's that is the thing. A lot like some the way some people look at it is that you got to be guided. You're being guided along, and it's up to you to like make the make the right choices. Like you're not gonna be spoon fed everything. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I think you just put the nail in the coffin right there. It's like, dude, like if you want help, go get help yourself. Like you can't rely on. It's your life, not someone else's. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. That reminds me of a joke I heard once at, at church camp. Crap. Oh my god. That's how it goes. There was this guy dying in the hospital. And he yes. had money, money for a surgery. Thanks. Now, camo. So he prayed to God, that God help me, help me win the lottery. And so I could pay the surgery. Next day, he, he didn't win the lottery. So I said, God, I need to win the lottery. Help me, help me, help me win, win it. So he pray, pray every day. He prays and he never won the lottery. So finally, uh, a few months later, he dies. He goes up to heaven, and he says, "God, didn't you hear my prayer?" And God says, "Yes, I heard your prayer." And the guy says, "Why didn't you answer? Why didn't you answer it?" And God said, "Why didn't you buy a lottery ticket?" Why didn't you buy a lottery ticket? <laughs> <laughs> 
Wow. Oh my god. All these enemies on this bridge. Camo. So, okay. I guess, I guess Gabe and Kyle aren't coming today. That's sad. We need to have a big reunion. Oh. How did they see me? Game, are you playing? Dying Light. Ah. I'm, I'm covering myself in zombie guts, and that's how I can just sneak up right behind them and snap their necks. So I can, like, massacre entire groups. What about you, Kyle? You, you play any games? Yeah, I play GTA and um, most of the other stuff. You have PS4, Xbox? Xbox One. Uh, yeah, I got. Well, Vandalia only has a PS4 that he won in, a, in that Taco Bell contest. I have both of them. Um, let's see. The um, PS4 I got for Christmas one year. My gram actually got it for me, but now my gram is dead. So. And then my Xbox One I got myself as a morning present after my dog died. <laughs> It's like, fine, if I can't have a dog, I'll have an Xbox. But I have a dog now. I got a new one. Is it, is it, is it your dog or the family dog or your sister's dog? Um, it's been, Well, I don't think any single person in the household owns him. My, my uncle got him for as like a Christmas present, and now he's just like the household. I think my sister plays with him the most, though. But she's going off to college, so it's probably going to be up to me mm. whenever I'm home, because she's not going to be home. Well, it's... The way I, I, I you see you take care of the most anyway, it seems like. <laughs> yeah, I have to take care of him the most because everybody goes out and my mom's tired of watching him. Is it an indoor dog or outdoor dog or both? Huh? Is it like an indoor dog or an outdoor yeah, dog? Yeah, indoor. I mean, we, well, obviously I take him outside, but. Okay. Build a dog house. Here you go, doggy. You're outdoor dog I mean, we have, a dog, we have a dog house outside that like my dog from like 10 years ago used. Like, here, doggy, is your new house. Enjoy. It's all, we'd have to clean it up. But then again, we'd have to chain him because my previous dog, we trusted, I, well, my dad trusted to just run outside because he wouldn't run away. Oh. He would just stay with you. You, you don't like a, a backyard fence or anything? Um, No, we don't. And that could be a problem then, I guess. I mean, well, my old dog before this one, he would not run if you just let him run around outside. Like, he would just stay, like, anytime you, he would just stay by her side, and, like, he wouldn't run off or anything. Like, if he did want to go somewhere, he would wait for you. So, oh my, I need camo, I need camo, I need camo. Ooh, I found a good video that we can refute, but I can only do audio, so. Okay. Well, it's, it's, it, the video is audio anyway, so you won't be able to see anything, but... See if, see if we can hear it. Alright. Okay. Okay. Can you hear it? Yeah, some, right. I, I could, and but... And help transform the public debate over Darwinian evolution. Now, Ben is back with a powerful sequel. You know, I had to take biology my in my, my last semester, and we had to cover Charles Darwin for a bit. Jeez. Oh, well, I know next year I'm going to take biology, so I might have to... Yeah, I remember, well, you're in ninth grade now. I had to take biology in 10th grade, so... Well, same with me. I'm going to take biology next year, so we'll probably yeah, like, about evolution. Yeah, year one, it was like physical science. Year two, it was biology. Year three was chemistry. And then I just did electives in year four. <laughs> well, actually, more specifically, I did forensic science in senior year. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't have science my junior and senior years. So I went to a technical oh school. Oh, my God. I was supposed to get across this bridge. So they didn't really do science classes there. Are oh, you wanting well, to play it? Yeah, yeah go on. This is Robert Crowther for ID the Future. On today's podcast, we will be giving you a special preview of my oh, it's a podcast. book, Evolution, Still a Theory in Crisis. And we'll be hearing from both Denton and biochemist Michael Behe. The year was 1985, 
and evolutionary biologists were in an uproar. Defying the scientific establishment, geneticist Michael Denton had just published a book that provided a searing critique of the neo-Darwinian mechanism of natural selection oh, acting on what the Oh my god. What? Anything to say? So far? No, nothing. <laughs> nothing really popping out. Denton's book was titled Evolution, A Theory in Crisis. The book mounted a frontal attack on the science behind Darwinian biology, arguing that the biological evidence simply did not substantiate Darwin. Whoa, okay. Uh, what? It simply did not? That, that doesn't... Just look at DNA. Like, come on, dude. Like, it's right there in front of your face. Jeez. How am I supposed to get across this bridge? Of course, some people just like don't even. Well, most of them, oh you tell them stuff, they don't even listen. Like it, but where's the evidence? It's right in front of you. I don't see it. Oh, that reminds me of one thing that happened to me when I was trying to get lunch one day. But that I only talk about that if the time comes and we have nothing else to talk about. But eh. uh, can, can, continue the video. All right. Core mechanism. With both a medical degree from Bristol University and a PhD in biochemistry from College in London, Denton had impeccable scientific credentials, making him difficult to ignore. Evolution, a theory in crisis, went on to inspire a whole new generation of scientists and scholars in what became known as the intelligent design movement. One of those scientists inspired by Denton's book was Lehigh University biochemist Michael Behe who years later went on to author his own path-breaking book, Darwin's Black Box. I think Denton's book was important because he was a legitimate biologist working, doing research in biology, who raised legitimate biological questions about whether a gradual, random mechanism could account for what we know to be the case in biology. So the problems that he... Okay, he says random, but evolution is not really a random process. More the, only thing that's, the only thing that's random is the mutations in the cell. Yeah, that, that's the only thing that's random. Other than that, like, natural selection is not random. It's, like, it, you know, it, it requires, like, you know, a mechanism, just like anything else. So. It's not a random process. Pointed out in retrospect, I think we're not that hard to see. <clears throat> but that's the kind of thing that oftentimes escapes a community that all has a shared point of view. And all it takes sometimes is for one person to say, well, wait a second, if you look at it in this direction, then our whole idea is is suspect. That was, I think, Denton's greatest accomplishment. In my travels, I found a number of people who said that it was precisely his questioning of Darwin's theory. Oh, I see. Oh, my gosh. So he questioned it. Okay, well, that's fine. I mean, we should always be skeptical of our own theories, but, I mean, it's, it's like... That's what, that's what science is. Exactly, but I mean, there's so far the only way that you are able to, you know, criticize evolution is if you're able to find evidence against evolution, which so far we haven't been able to. So, you know, you can't really argue against it if you don't have any evidence, you know, supporting your criticism. Point of view that opened their eyes and essentially allowed them to to evaluate the evidence rather than just take people's word for it. And they also came to the conclusion that Darwin's mechanism was not a sufficient answer. More than 30 years after the original publication of Evolution: A Theory and Crisis, Michael Denton has now published a powerful sequel titled Evolution: Still a Theory and Crisis. It's a book you need to know about if you're interested in the cutting edge of the debate over Darwinian evolution. I still, I still, I hate, I, I hate that where they just says it's, it's only a theory. They, they don't know what a theory it really is in scientific terms. 
Yes, there's a difference between evolution as a theory and the 2012 Mayan disaster as a theory. <laughs> Straw manning right there. I remember I made a video like saying on that on December 21st, like the moment the clock struck 12, I was like, oh, it's December 21st and I'm not dead. Alright, so basically, hold on, I'll play it and then I'll, I'll say what I need to say. Oh my god. Steps is still highly unsolved in most cases. And the second message is that a great deal of the order of the biological world, there's no evidence that it's adaptive. And you Whoa. <laughs> wait, what? It's not adaptive. But wait a minute. Doesn't life always change? Isn't that what evolution is? How can you say that there's no change? Is that is that what you're claiming? There's no change? Okay. Yeah, yeah oh. we, haven't, we haven't... Kyle, we haven't seen a, a dog give birth to a cat. <laughs> there's no, been no change. Okay, let's try this. Straw manning. The easiest way to find change is the fact, very fact that you have to take a day oh! vaccine every year because the virus changes, so you have to change the vaccination so that you won't die or get sick. Yes, and don't we give birth to we don't we give birth to identical twins of ourselves? Sometimes, wait, yeah. Wait, 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 we don't give birth to identical twins. <laughs> we give birth to different, same species, but different. And over time, enough changes yeah, equals a different species. There we go. That was easy to refute. Now, we're only half first, of first, first of all, we've got, we got to get the, in their head that's, that we had the time to do this thing. Like, oh, because they're, cause they're right. 6,000 years isn't enough time to do this stuff. Yeah, but we have fossils. But, but since Earth is older than 6,000 years old, then yes, we had plenty of time. Exactly. <laughs> well, actually, these guys aren't creationists. They're intelligent design theories, but still, I mean... That's pretty much the same thing at this point. Oh, yeah. I used to think, they're, I used to think they were different, but really they're not. I used to think intelligent design was the same as... Was the same as theistic evolution, which I kind of believe, but it turned out that tel design isn't even evolution at all. Well, no, because theistic evolution is <laughs> different. Since theistic evolution, my understanding is that it's where God is transcendent, whereas intelligent design is where God is part of nature, which is not what God is. So, you know, it's kind of not a very valid term to use. So. So any other thing we can make fun of, of this pod? They say anything else stupid? What? The, the people talking, they say anything else stupid? <laughs> yeah. Right, I'm going to continue. You have to prove it's adaptive if you're going to build a Darwinian worldview. Wait, wait, worldview? Darwinian worldview? I've never heard of that term. I don't think it's a worldview. I think... I think he's getting confused between materialism and Darwinism. Because Darwinism is not a worldview, it's a science. And so, you know, it's kind of... Wow. The origin and evolution of things in nature. You have to show that they're adaptive before you explain the binaturals. Wait, you have to show that they're adaptive. Haven't we already done that with with viruses? And how they that's only one example. <laughs> In his new book, Denton revisits his earlier thesis about the inability of Darwinian evolution to explain the history of life, as Michael Behe explains. He has accumulated evidence showing not only that the problems of back then are still unsolved, but they're exacerbated. That there are divisions between classes and ages that are not no, by any of the innumerable intermediates that Darwin's theory requires. In ev what? Wait, he's claiming that there's divisions? I don't know any division, honestly. Do you?
I can't hear you guys. Oh, I'm here. Oh. I don't. Do you know any divisions? I mean, yeah, obviously there's holes in the theory, but that doesn't disprove the theory. Yeah. Just like there's holes in gravity that we don't understand yet, it doesn't mean the whole theory is wrong. Hmm. Liam, aren't you there? I'm gonna oh wait. Oh my god. Lamont. I'm just gonna continue on and then hopefully he comes back. Evolution still a theory in crisis. Denton argues that there remains an irresistible consilience of evidence for rejecting Darwinian cumulative selection as the major driving force of evolution. Denton shows how from the origin of life to the origin of human language, the great divisions in the natural order are still as profound as ever, and they are still unsupported by the series of adaptive transitional forms predicted by Darwin. Okay, uh, like I said before, yes, obviously there are holes in the theory, but that doesn't disprove the theory as a whole. Just like there's holes in gravity, just like there's some things in gravity, like, for example, black holes that we don't get into. And it doesn't mean that gravity doesn't exist or that the theory of gravity is false just because we don't understand certain parts. Alright, I'm going to continue. But evolution still a theory in crisis does more than simply take Dan's original theory. Also offers a provocative new argument. Darwinian theory assumes that all significant biological features came about because they were originally adaptive. That is, they promoted an organism's immediate survival in some specific environment. But Denton now challenges the assumption that all biological order is adaptive. What? I, I can't. Oh my gosh! How is it not adaptive? Like we see it happen all the time. That's how evolution works. I don't see why this is a problem. Like I, I, I wish they were here. That they could, they could be a bit better insulting this than I can be. I don't see how this is a problem for evolution. That's how it works. I mean, yeah, obviously, like I said, there are holes in the theory, but doesn't, that doesn't disprove the theory. Come on. Deny that assumption, and I believe it can't be proven in general to any degree in nature. I think there's almost certainly a vast amount of order which is not adaptive in any specific organism and never was adaptive in any particular organism. Okay, so basically, it's too complex, therefore, evolution is false. What? According to Denton, if biology is riddled with non-adaptive order, this poses a fundamental challenge to modern Darwinian theory, because Darwinian theory has no explanation for non-adaptive order. He thinks that there's a, what you would call a typological structure behind life. That is, there are given structures that have no particular adaptive value but are embedded in nature. And it's a continuing and unanswered challenge to Darwin's theory. Okay. Well, obviously, if the environment doesn't change, then most likely the organisms living in that environment won't change either. Again, I don't see how this is a problem in evolution. I mean, yeah, they yeah they might not evolve, but that the reason why they don't evolve is because the environment doesn't change during that period of time. Evolution still a during crisis. Damn! Snag some outstanding reviews. Professor Michael Flannery of the University of Alabama at Birmingham holds the book a rare and powerful combination that demands careful reading. Paleontologist Gunther Beckley praises the book as a highly competent and very thoughtful critique. Of I, hey, I bet you that most of the people that like had those quotes are probably intelligent design theorists, or they're probably creationists. Probably yes. 
Yeah, they're probably all like anti-evolutionists that are saying that, not actual scientists. The New York Darwinian paradigm that marshals a great variety of indisputable facts from biology and paleontology. Biologist Jonathan Wells, author of Icons of Evolution and The Myth of Junk DNA, calls Denton's new book a devastating critique of Darwinian evolution and goes on to say, everyone involved in the controversies over evolution should read this book. Professor Steve Fuller of the University of Warwick says evolution still a theory in crisis is the one book he would recommend to any student or layperson who wants to think in positive scientific terms out of Darwin's black box. What? Black Wait, box. what do you mean? Black box? I said black box from the airplane. No, I think what he means is that I guess he assume that if you believe in evolution, therefore you don't believe in an intelligence. Yeah, we're not thinking outside the box, apparently. That's, uh, that's, I think that's them. Like, we're, we're stuck in the box because we can't get out of it. <laughs> what box? Like, what do you mean by a box? Like, you mean science or like. Yeah, apparently, like, yeah. Like, like, we, get, we can't think of anything else. We're inside, we're, inside, we're inside the box and we can't think of anything else. So I think that's you guys. Oh, <laughs> so, oh, so since we don't have an opposing theory, therefore. Therefore, it's a box, okay? Well, we don't have any opposing theories for gravity. Doesn't mean that, I mean, we might, you know, doesn't mean that we're in a box. It's just how nature works. I mean, if you want to get out of the box of evolution, then how about you find another theory that better explains why nature changes? Until you do that, we're never going to have another opposing theory. So... It took us like it took us like half a million years to get get, to get this one. Exactly. <laughs> Alright, the video is done. I'm gonna finish it off and then put my final thought. Have I piqued your interest? You can find out a lot more about evolution, still a theory in crisis, by visiting the book's website, www.theoryincrisis.com. That's theoryincrisis.com. There you can download a free chapter, watch video conversations with Denton, and learn about the biology of the Baroque, a new short documentary inspired by the book. That website again is www.theoryincrisis.com. I hope you'll check it out. Alright, so that's it. Um, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> Not one must to say. I don't think. Yeah, I I pretty much. I think I pretty much nailed the coffin in this one, but pretty easy for me at least. I don't know about the book. I mean, I haven't read it, but I don't. I don't think it's at all convincing. Since because if it was, I'm pretty sure that guy would get a Nobel Prize by now. If he had just proved it. So. <laughs> Yeah, the only proving scientific theories was that easy. Oh wait, it's not easy. It's hard. It's hard for a reason. Oh, it's it's hard. Creationists are like, oh, it's it's so hard to refute. Oh, how about I straw man it and then I can refute it. Yeah, that sounds much easier. Like the whole point of science, what's it called peer review? You gotta get everyone, you know, put it up for a review and then like. Have people, you know, either pull it apart or like or agree with it eventually. Your scientific uh, companions, or whatever they're called. Yeah, I was saying, I said Gabe and them are much better with these words than I am. Um, oh, that was fun. Yeah. Well, I guess nothing else to talk about, so. Yes, this episode is coming to a close. It is. Yeah, I can't get this. Well, yeah, I don't know what to talk about. And your voice is glitching. Yeah, your voice is glitching, bro. So, you, you, so Kyle, you want to plug plug your channel or anything before we go? Um, you can link my channel. Well, you want me to like mirror it or something? I mean, just uh. Tell, tell, tell people that, what your channel's about. And oh, yeah. My channel is 
I read like some passages from the Bible and stuff. Um, I mostly I'm I'm doing I'm pretty soon I think I'm hoping by tomorrow I can upload. I need to do a response to some other guy claiming that hell is fire, literal burning fire. But um, yeah, I might. I'm hoping that maybe this summer I might upload a cool video about why I left creationism and I'm gonna. So the first, I'm hoping that the inter, I'm gonna do an introduction. Section one is gonna be the evolution Damn! creationism debate. <laughs> my input on it and what the creationist fails to do. Um, and then the second section two is going to be response to creationist arguments, which is me refuting each argument that creationists try to use to, do, to um, discredit evolution. Then section three is going to be about why young of creationism is unbiblical, and I'm going to try to um, show how the a literal interpretation of Genesis does not work with when it was actually written. And then I'm going to do my conclusion, which is, um, I haven't figured that one out yet, but I'm hoping that it, I can make it clear to people that young earth creationism not only, not only is bad for science, it is also bad for theology as well. So um, just want to make that point clear to all of y'all. <laughs> What about you, Snick? Any plans for the summer, video-wise? Um, I record, I plan to, rec I do Let's Play videos, I'm pretty sure anyone who watches this podcast regularly already knows that, or has seen my co-ops with Vandelia, but I plan to record at, le at least once a night for, probably what I'm going to do is alternate between my co-op with Vandelia on KH2, and because I'm recording for KH2 right now, but Recom's not even close to finishing. Yeah uploading, but un eventually I do have to go to Florida, at least for a couple of weeks, to help out my aunt, but while I'm here, during the summer, I'm just doing my videos. Well, I hope you all come back next time, and, and you all uh, on the audience, check. hopefully we can do this one, so get this practice up right again, so, so hopefully we'll stay tuned, and we'll have more topics more guests, and more things to talk about. And Vandalia's ro robot voice getting cured. Awesome. And as always, enjoy the randomness. See ya.